The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives Gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press. All the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filters today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We are on the march. The Empire is on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex, and I'm joined in the studio with Leanne McAdoo, another member of the Nightly News crew. And Leanne, you were at the fluoride meeting in Austin. And we've got a lot of InfoWars crew still down there. Uh, can you give us a teaser for that? Because that's going to be coming up on the nightly news. We've got a report about what's happening down there. Well, there were a lot of people that showed up to voice how they felt about the fact that the city of Austin is going to be putting, at, at the very least, a half a million taxpayer dollars yeah. into artificially fluoridating the water supply. So, Just amazing to me. <laughs> they, they do this all in the name of taking care of people's teeth. And yet, mm -hmm. you know, there's a big difference in topical application of something, even if it were safe and effective. There's a big difference in the topical application of it and ingesting it internally. You know, there's warnings against that in, in toothpaste. And how do you control the dosage when you just dump it into the water? A dosage for an adult male is going to be different than it is for a female, for a child, that's, a child and, and even for a child that's developing, that's a, a fetus. How do you control that? Well, you can't control that if you just dump it in the water. It absolutely makes no sense, even for the people who want to try to argue that it's safe and effective, but it isn't safe and effective. We've seen study after study. Harvard has had several studies, and the most recent one that they've done, along with uh, some Chinese researchers, is to go back and look at multiple studies and try to quantize the amount of the IQ dropping to in, in the population to 
the amount of the fluoride. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to make a, you know, if you add this much fluoride to the water, you're going to get this much drop in the IQ. It's not a question as to whether the IQ is going to drop. It's just a question as to how, how much. much. Exactly. I yes. mean, it's just amazing. And yet they tax us to do this. They put it in mm -hmm. and you can't get these people to stop. Why do you think that is? <laughs> well, some people there were <laughs> pretty pretty certain that it's because we're dealing with psychopaths. But, um, you know, I was... <laughs> That's an element. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely an element. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt and say perhaps they... Maybe they just were too busy to actually read the warning label when they signed up to put hydrofluorosilicic acid in the water supply. You know. Well, there's also the money thing. We can also yeah. follow the money. And we know that there <laughs> the was bribery. a... Yeah, exactly. There was a, an abrupt 180 in the way the medical community looked at fluoridation and, and fluoride. There was an abrupt 180 when the aluminum industry, past executive of Alcoa, became what was then the equivalent to the head of the FDA. And then, of course, they doubled down on it when it became a waste product of the nuclear industry mm. after that started. So what we're taking is we're taking the toxic waste from the aluminum and nuclear industries, and we're paying... Yeah, to right. dump it into our drinking water. Yeah, I mean, it'd be bad enough if we, we paid to up. dispose it for yeah. them, but to have to actually eat it, that's like uh, doubling it down. It's yeah. like, you're not just going to pay for it, we're going to shove it down your throat. The company that we're purchasing no. it from, uh, pay, uh, the taxpayers are paying for, uh, it says right on their website, you know, don't put into the rakes, lakes, rivers, streams, you yeah. know, don't let it leak into the air. But apparently there's some magic wand or something that they wave here at the city of Austin that makes it safe to drink. As soon as it goes on the water supply, it's great. And, yeah. and back in Raleigh, we had we had uh, some people who had met up on um, Planet Info Wars, and they wanted to do activism for freedom and liberty there. And the first thing they picked was fluoride. They go down and talk to the Raleigh City Council, and the Raleigh City Council just picks up their glasses and toasts them and says, hey, we're going to keep doing it. We don't care. I mean, it's just amazing, the arrogance, the stupidity, and the corruption that's going on. But you want to talk about something else, too. You want to talk about a story that you've been following on the nightly news about designer babies. Right, yeah. Bloomberg actually reported that the U.S. regulators are now kind of weighing the safety of this new technology that uh, it hopes to eliminate genetic diseases in, news, in newborns. So... They've done this before where they've already taken like a fertilized egg or something, but now they're actually going to be taking the DNA from one dad and two mothers to create a disease-free child. Mm. So they're disease-free. They, yeah, yeah, they hope. Fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah. If they understand everything about DNA, which we ought to be pretty skeptical about that, since it wasn't very long ago that they were saying, yeah, you know, most of that... Uh, junk DNA. Yeah, most of that's junk DNA, and then it's like a few years later, well, you know, we just figured out what that's for, and it's no longer junk. It's like, yeah. these are the guys... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Whoops. You know, yeah, we're not building pianos here, just nail these two boards together. I mean, yeah. it's, it's kind of, it's very frightening to see them do that. And of course, the FDA is involved in that because... <laughs> well, they see us as agricultural products or yes. what? Yeah. I mean, it's the drug exactly. side of it. Exactly, we're yes. a biological product. That's um, Here, they've done this procedure before. In 1997 uh, to 97 to 2003, there were about 30 children that were born with this same sort of technique. And then the FD FDA came in and said, this is a biological product. We can regulate it. And so they shut the program down for using it to create humans, hmm. basically. So here this kind of ties in to the young lady, the young girl that's been put in foster care at, at uh, the Boston. Yeah, we're talking about that during the break. Hospital. What she's suffering from is a, a defective. The uh, mitochondrial disease, yes. mm -hmm. which is the exact disease that this technique here is, is attempting to eradicate. So hmm. here we're seeing where the government is stepping in and saying in these hospitals, they're taking these children away who have this disease. They're already taking the parent out of it, uh, actually the hospital calls it a parentectomy. So they're, <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's, that's their little pet name cold. for it. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you've got one well-respected hospital called Tufts that says that, that that's a physical condition. And then you've got another one that says that's simply a psychological condition. The parents are seeing her condition deteriorating rapidly. They believe that it is a physical condition, but the government steps in, the judge steps in and says, you're not going to make that decision about your child. We're going to make that decision about your child. We know your child better than you do. 
we have the interest of your child better than you do. And oh, by the way, you can't even talk to the media about it. If you do, we're going to slap you with a contempt charge. Right. We said it's absolutely amazing, but that's where they're headed. Right. And it's just, it just shows how much ch power the children's hospital has because these people have been treating their daughter for this disease for many, many years. And then just a year ago, she gets diagnosed with this different um, mental disorder, somatoform disorder. And they say, oh, that's what she's got. And now you need to stop giving her medication for that. And mm -hmm. you're over medicating her. This is a very, very important case right here because it brings together several different factors that we see happening. And if you don't think this is going to happen more and more frequently with Obamacare, once the government is paying for your health care, they are going to be making the decisions about it. And we've already seen them making the decisions about it. We already see them dictating to people how much coverage you're going to have, what's going to be covered, forcing you to buy coverage for things that you can't use. Single men having to buy maternity care, for example. And that's why people's insurance rates are skyrocketing by a factor of two, by a factor of five in many cases, why, they losing, why they're losing their insurance. And uh, it's because this has been written by the insurance company, as Alex has said from the very beginning. This is not something that is going to make health care more affordable, more accessible. It's going to make it more expensive and more profitable for the health insurance companies. It's not going to give us more access to it. But what it will do is it will give the government a stranglehold on the healthcare situation, denying people healthcare, taking children away from families as we see happening here in this case in Boston. And perhaps if you don't get all of your vaccines, mm -hmm. then maybe you don't get any healthcare. Right, well, that's the issue here with these designer babies. If you're you know, someone out there who's thinking that this might be a good idea for you, the FDA has already said that this is something that they can regulate. It's a biological product. So who's to say that they're going to, you know, if you decide that you want to take care of this biological product a certain way, if they don't agree with that, they can swoop in and say, well, this is, we regulate. This person is, I mean, do they have the same classification as, you know, a human? Mm -hmm. And we see how they treat children and parents now who aren't. Well, you know, we, we look at these things it, it's over and over again. It doesn't matter what aspect of your life it is, whether it is making health care decisions about your child, deciding how, what, what kind of food you want to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can't have raw milk. You can't have organic food because we're going to put those guys out of business because we have politically connected big agricultural firms. We're going to make GMO uh, legal in the United States when it's banned in country after country. And uh, fluoride is another example of it. They're going to dump whatever they want to in our water. They're going to tell us what we can do with our business, with our families, with our food, with our medicine. We are their slaves, and they're going to tell us whatever they is in their best interest. So they don't care what we think. We don't get to make those decisions anymore. Oh, exactly. And that's today when we were down at City Hall, perfect example. You know, there's hundreds of people in there today and, you know, people are going presenting their line item, talking, you know, to city council. They leave once theirs is addressed. Once it comes time for the general public to speak to the godly city council, all these police moved in to the room and really? kind of set up at different exits. And it, it was just so like, oh, we need to make sure that the slaves don't get out of hand expressing their First Amendment right to their elected officials that they... <laughs> put into those seats. Well, you're lucky they just, just didn't send you down to a quote unquote free, free speech zone like mm -hmm. they do at the political conventions where they take anybody who has something to say, which is specifically protected speech under the First Amendment. They send people down and away from the conventions, put them in cages. I mean, it's <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Anybody that thinks, you know, when I was growing up, used to people would say, yeah, you know, what do you want me to do? But, oh, it's a free country. Do what you want. You never hear anybody say that anymore. No. Everybody knows deep down it is not a free country. We don't have freedom. That's why right. we talk about it so much. You're as some Europeans have pointed out. Shut up. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, the issue here that goes on with this, with these designer babies, they have no idea what the permanent change is going to be when they start messing with the human genome. And so far, they've just tested this on mice, and already the mice are showing that they ha are having breathing problems as well as reduced learning and exploring capabilities. And so this research, of course, suggests that they don't know what's going to happen when they replace one mitochondrial strain with another. Mm -hmm. they, they, they just don't know. And mm -hmm. so basically, now you're dealing with you have taken it upon yourself to do this to your child 
who had no say about whether they wanted to be a gen genetically modified human. And now, you know, generation after generation, whatever they have, whatever kind of diseases they may produce as a result is going to continue to be passed down.